Welcome to another walkthrough for Postgres. Uh, in this one, we are going to talk about um, group by and how group by works. And group by is related to distinct in that both group by and distinct in effect create a record set and then post process that record set. Distinct is really simple. It throws things away. And, and for this one, instead of making yet another little data set that's hard to uh, keep track of, I'm just going to play with the built-in time zones. So there are a whole bunch of time zones. This PG time zone names is a, a table that's sort of a virtual table that it, all the different time zones that you can do. So it's got a name abbreviation, the offset from UTC, and whether or not it's daylight savings time or not. So I can do like a, we've already talked about select count star. There's 591 rows in the PG time zone underscore names. But, and we can also use a select distinct, which is something we just got done talking about, which basically is reducing the vertical replication in, in the I is DST. So you see there's just either true or false. And so if we just do a select distinct, you see that you know there's, there's two rows that are distinct. There's only a false row and a true row. So the select distinct you know, showed me that. Now, probably I should just say select is IST from PG time zone names, uh, limit 20, just for yucks. You know, you'll see that if you don't say distinct, oh, what did I do? Oh, is DST, not is IST. Select I is DST from PG time zone names, limit 20. Can't even type it right. Is DST. There we go. So you see all this vertical replication, right? You see all this vertical replication and distinct just sort of squeezes out that vertical repli repli replication. And again, it's looking at the rows. If I added something to that, um, if, I, if I added something to it, the distinct would not just be is DST, okay? This is not exactly the, we just talked about distinct, so I'm not gonna talk about distinct again. Um, now. So, so here, this select count is DST. Let's take a look at this particular one. So the idea here is this is doing, a, it's pretty much like a distinct on is DST, but in a sense, as the duplicate rows are being thrown away, they're being counted. So select count is DST and is DST from PG time zone, group by is DST. So that basically says, this is kind of like a distinct but it's a grouping. So it groups all of the F rows together and then all the T rows together and then counts them and gives them back to us. Okay, so that's the essence of group by. Now I'll have some more complex examples, but it's really important that you have this basic example understood, right? Take a bunch of rows, group them together by the distinct values of is DST, and then count them. And that's what this, this is showing us. But we can do some more things, right? We can do things like we can do the same thing for the abbreviation. There's all the abbreviations and the count of the different abbreviations that are being used, like EST for Eastern Standard Time. There's a whole bunch of those. So that's another one. Now, the, you can have a where clause. And so here's, here's the, let's look at this one, make this one really wide. There we go. You can have a where clause, right? Group by abbrev right here. So I can say this. But the, so that, I'll, let me just run that one. So we have a where clause, and this where clause affects the things that participate in the count. So it's gonna calculate this count, but it's gonna do this is DST equals true, right? Okay, and so that where clause sort of filtered the records before it did the group by. Okay, now the, the problem is, is we might want to filter based on this count. And so that's what the having clause is. So the having clause, the, the where clause is filter the records, pass them into the group by process, and then the having clause makes it so that we can do it afterwards. So now we can say where count abbrev. Now the key is, is you gotta be pretty careful. You can't just put any old thing in having here. It's gotta be one of the things in the, in the selected rows. So now, Oh, so there one no that where DST is T group by a brief having count more than 10. Uh, I think that if I made that false, I might get more, but yeah, I 
got more. <laughs> so there's there's not a lot of uh, daylight savings times in there, a lot of false daylight savings times, so you see that. But the wear, again, the wear happens before the group buy, and that's why it's, you see the order here is that it happens with a wear clause, then there's a group buy clause, and then there's a having clause, okay? And just having allows you to sort of post-process the results of the group buy, right? That's, I think it's really quite awesome. It, I mean, it, it may seem like a silly thing, but believe me, um, you know, we, we didn't, <clears throat> it would, it would be difficult without it. So here we're just going to count the abbreviations um, and look for the ones that are more than 10. And so that shows you could also then sort of, you know, I would like to order this by the uh, count of the abbreviations descending. So we'll do that. All right, so these are the most common abbreviations now, 43, 38, right on down. That's quite nice. There's only 12 of them that have more than 10, that abbreviations that are used more than 10 times. And so this is... Uh, this is a subquery, and we'll talk about subqueries coming up next. So I hope this whole select distinct was uh, useful to you. I mean, this the group by is useful to you. Uh, and then uh, coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about subqueries.